This is my guest lecture delivered in the Kim's College of Bangalore on 23rd July 2016. The topic was my tension free and mesh free nivel hernia repair based on the physiological principle. This guest lecture is specially designed for the resident surgeons and the junior surgeons. The Sarada Repair, a revolution in basic concepts of groin hernia formations and its operation technique. The question is, do we need to change today's trends in groin hernia surgery now? My answer is yes, because now we have a new technique that is tension free, almost recurrence free and with the lowest rate of complications. You repair hernia with continuous absorbable sutures, a thing never imagined till today. It is very simple and physiological repair, easy to learn and follow and can be done on outdoor basis under local anesthesia and with fast recovery. This repair is a pure tissue repair and does not need any foreign body. In fact, it removes the disadvantages of both foreign body as seen in mesh and tension as seen in other repairs. The accepted methods of repair that is inguinal hernia repair today are 1. Bassini repair, it's from Italy. 2. Shoulder is repair, it's from Canada. 3. Open and laparoscopic mesh repair, it's from Germany. And 4. Desada repair, of course, it's from India. Bassini repair. It involves dissection and excision of the inguinal floor. This is very important first step of this operation. Then tightening of the internal ring. Then suturing internal oblique and transverses abdominis muscles to the inguinal ligament. Recurrence rate was just 4% in the hands of original surgeons. This operation became popular, but re-evaluation by many other surgeons revealed very high and unacceptable rates. Nice repair. It also involves excision of weak inguinal floor as its important first step. Excision of cribriform fascia. Cremaster muscle sling is prepared. Four layer suturing with stainless steel wire is done. Now of course this is modified by the surgeons. Lower crux of superficial ring suture to anterior rectus sheath to avoid recurrence at medial end. Genital nerve, external spermatic vessels and cremastic muscle are excised. Commanding operation this is very commanding operation and needs training. Danger to iliopubic vein and femoral vessels. Shoulder is made, in my opinion, mess of clean bassin is repaired. See this picture. It shows total excision of weak inguinal floor is a must for this and is very risky and difficult. Profuse bleeding from iliopubic vein or danger to femoral vessels may take place. See this picture. Throttling of tissues and later necrosis may occur by repeated stitches in a small area of few millimeters. Why tension repairs have failed? We have omitted the first important step of excising weak and inguinal floor because of risk involved. We have modified operation the way it suits to us. Muscles are pulled down to suture to inguinal ligament so they are under tension even at rest. This tension increases many fold during action. This tension increases further due to shrinkage of fibrous tissue in later life. Muscles are displaced from its original place, so it tries to go back to its original place. This results in more pain and more recurrences in these tension repairs. Lifting spine mesh repair. 
Lichtenstein puts a mesh, a mechanical barrier. Nobody uses classical Lichtenstein mesh for repairs now. A bitailed mesh with knitted borders was used by him. Now mesh is cut to suit surgeon's choice to reduce the cost. Loose or tight suturing of mesh can't be standardized. Size of the mesh also can't be standardized. Quality of mesh fabric is also not standardized. Why low quality mesh for poor and high quality mesh for rich? Mesh is a foreign body, a simple piece of synthetic cloth naturally associated with all foreign body complications. No answer. Basin and shoulder eyes repairs are basically and principally similar operations. Previously described and now rejected, tentalum gauze or dacron neck hernioplasty is also basically and principally similar to Lichtenstein mesh hernioplasty. Mechanism of action to prevent recurrence is same, but still later operations claim less than 1% recurrence rate. How? Is it possible? High recurrence rates. Cux, Schember, Berlinger, Piper, Belanger, Panos, Kingsworth and many surgeons reported in the hands of junior surgeons or general surgeons without expertise in hernia surgery and operating in less than ideal conditions, the recurrence rate have been reported to be is still very high. What is demand of junior surgeons? Inguinal hernia is bread and butter of junior surgeons. Their demand is, do not find a new operation technique that converts recurrence rate from 2% to 1% in the hands of experts, but to find an operation technique which is simple, safe, easy to learn and perform, does not require foreign material to repair and also gives recurrence rate less than 2% without major complications in the hands of non-consultant or resident staff. Today's operation techniques do not satisfy all those criteria completely. No doubt, therefore, inval hernia repair remain a problem till invention of my technique and is my humble contribution to solve this problem. the problems with today's techniques? Loss for every recurrence is 1200 pounds in UK. Similarly, loss for every re-exploration required for any complication is more than the expenses required to treat primary hernias. 80,000 repairs per year in UK with recurrences of 7.2% translates to nearly 6,000 operations which are required to be redone every year. This comes to a huge loss of 6000 into 1200 is equal to 7 lakh, 72 lakh or 7.2 million pounds every year and 295 lost years of national productivity per year in UK. What is the solution to avoid these losses? We should invent such a technique that fulfills all criteria of modern hernia surgery. What are modern hernia surgery criteria? It should be simple and safe to do and learn by the resident surgeons with good results. Does not use foreign body in any form. Does not use weak muscles and fascia. Early ambulation without much pain. Patient goes back to home in a day. Patient is back to his work within a week. No major complications and almost no recurrences. What about mesh repair? Does it qualify as ideal model hernia repair based on those criteria? No, certainly no. Question is, mesh is a simple piece of synthetic cloth prepared from polypropylene or polyester. Would you accept its routine use in all the cases? Ideally not. You are extremely cautious not to forget a swab in the inside abdomen during any surgery. Then how you are stitching a swab like piece of cloth 
inside the body in measure pairs, leaving patients to his own fate. What we are doing today is right. Mesh is a foreign body, is known to everyone. Millions of microabscesses are formed and dense fibrous tissue is laid down in inhuman canal is also known to everyone. That distorts anatomy, atrophies muscles, nerves, vas and vessels get engulfed and affected. There are complications like pain, infection, testicular atrophy, sinus formation, recurrence and many more. These all complications are also known to every surgeon and still mesh is routinely used in all involuntary repairs. Why? Why not laparoscopic repair? All complications of mesh are present in laparoscopic repair also. In fact, these complications carry high risk because mesh is stitched inside the abdomen, preperitoneal. Additional complications are internal losing, risk of general anesthesia, nerve damage, trauma to viscera, trochar hernia, recurrences and many more. You can imagine what would happen to vas and testicular vessels due to mesh fibrosis because mesh is directly spread on these vessels and vas. See this picture. Mesh is directly spread on vas and testicular vessels, naturally causing fibrosis in that area. Thus, you know that mesh is not 100% safe to body for its routine use in all the cases. Lap repair carry higher risk and requires extreme skills to give excellent results. Many patients' life worldwide might be getting affected by unscrupulous use of endoscopes by inadequately trained surgeons. Imagine the fate of millions of patients operated in remote places by many surgeons with low-quality mesh without any standards. Pharma companies will not bother for patients, but you must bother for your patients. Surgical fraternity thrives for 100% safety and cure without complications in every surgery. Then how we have accepted mesh repairs in spite of its morbidity and complications? It's because no good pure tissue repair was available to common surgeons till today. It's because mesh repair is a simple operation and also because of the perfect marketing at all levels and by all means by the companies. Product Costing few rupees is being sold at 1,000 to 5,000 rupees making huge profits. Companies will market this product by all means. What is their marketing strategy, strategy or marketing magic? Control publishing houses and publish repeatedly similar articles through various doctors claiming measure pair is the best. Control conferences and make leading doctors to present how mesh repair is the best. Start CME in conferences and make it compulsory to attend to postgraduate students and then hammer on to their mind, same thing again, how mesh repair is the best. Come out with new product of mesh and again send leading doctors to various seminars to show how mesh repair is the best. advantage of faith posed by trainee doctors and students in their teachers is exploited. Repeated presentations are made in conferences, repeated publications are made in magazines, and the song about mesh goes on and on till junior and budding surgeons mind gets preconditioned to such an extent that they stop thinking beyond mesh for hernia repairs. And who is the loser? The deadliest loser is your own patient. Many patients operated with mesh, open or laparoscopic repair, suffer from morbidity and complications. Some patients' life gets ruined. Who is responsible for this? But still companies with our help are busy in marketing their product like a soap or hair shampoo. Every time coming out with a new variant of the same synthetic cloth-like mesh, then mesh and plug, then PHS, 
then heavy weight, then light weight, then small pore, then large pore, etc., etc. And who is the winner? And the winner is Mesh Manufacturing Company that silently pocket millions of dollars profit every year from all over the world. And what about doctors who are catalytic agents and with whose help companies are making huge profits get? Nothing. Our prestigious organizations have all given our platform to them and made them financially giant. But still we doctors have to bargain with them about selling stalls or getting advertisements or sponsorships. And to stop this, we need to find such a simple hernia operation technique that even a junior resident can also do it with minimal complications and recurrences. And to achieve this, let us understand the etiopathology of inguinal canal. We claim that old concepts that prevent inguinal hernia formation described in the textbooks are not true and perfect. They need to be reconsidered. A revolution in the concepts and technique. Misconceptions 1. Posterior wall of the inguinal canal is formed by the transversal fascia. No, it is wrong. Strength of the transversal fascia gives protection. No, it is also wrong. Obliquity of the inguinal canal, shutter mechanism and many other theories are discussed in the books. These all theories are not true and perfect. Rigid anatomical wall created by mesh can give best results. No, this is not true. 1. Strength of the transversal fascia described in every textbook is not true. The transversal fascia do not have any strength and it cannot give any protection because it is, it is paper thin. It is just an extension of the endoabdominal fascia. Obliquity of the inguinal canal is not true because the spermatic cord is lying throughout its course on the transversal fascia alone. It does not pierce three muscles as stated in all the textbooks. See this picture. Every individual with high arch or a patent process vaginalis do not develop hernia. Shutter mechanism is also not true because repeated acts of crying does not increase the incidence of hernia in newborn babies in spite of the almost absent obliquity of inguinal canal or shutter mechanism. Shutter mechanism at internal ring says medial border of the internal ring is pulled upwards and laterally to close the internal ring. And shutter mechanism at canal says that oblique fibers of the muscle arch moves down and medially to go, to go close to the inguinal ligament. This opposite movement of the same muscle cannot be accepted. Those concepts that are said to prevent herniation are not at all restored in the today's techniques of inguinal hernia repair and yet 70 to 98 percent of patients are cured. So these are not the real factors that prevent hernia formation. Then what are the real factors that prevent hernia formation? Our theory is aponeurotic extensions from the transversus abdominis aponeurotic arch in the posterior wall is the real factor. See this picture, anatomy of the inguinal canal posterior view. You can see this is transversus abdominis aponeurotic arch and these are the aponeurotic extensions coming from arch and going and getting inserted on the inguinal ligament and then the pectineal ligament. Again cross section of the inguinal canal. See this is the posterior wall. It has two parts. One is aponeurotic extensions and another is transversal fascia. This is operative picture. In a non-hernia patient, this shows normal full cover of aponeurotic extensions is seen on the posterior wall. And the posterior wall is formed by the aponeurotic extensions and not by the transversal fascia as, descri as described in the textbooks. 
See, these are scanty epidermolytic extensions. Here, these extensions are scanty, and therefore hernia formation took. They are absent in this area, so hernia formation took place in the lower part. Again, epidermolytic extensions are present in this part, but they are absent in upper part, so hernia took place there. This is deficient epidermolytic extensions. So posterior wall is an important structure in protecting individual from hernia formation. This posterior wall is not composed of one layer of transversal fascia as is described in all the textbooks, but is composed of two layers, transversal fascia behind and aponeurotic extensions in front of this transversal fascia. The strength of the posterior wall is directly related to the number of aponeurotic fibers it contains. The aponeurotic extensions give mechanical strength to the posterior wall to resist the internal abdominal blows and prevent hernia formation. Dynamic posterior wall. This concept you must try to understand. This posterior wall is kept physiologically dynamic due to those aponeurotic extensions and the muscle contractions. Muscle contraction of the transversus abdominis push these aponeurotic extensions upwards and laterally, converting it into a shield to prevent hernia formation, physiologically dynamic action of the posterior wall. See this picture. Posterior wall is at rest, relaxed, but whenever there is action, the transverse abdominis will contract and will convert this posterior wall into a shield to prevent from herniation. Dynamic posterior wall. This tension in the posterior wall is created in gradation as per the force of contraction of the muscles. And the force of contraction of the muscle changes as per the force of the internal abdominal blow. This is important physiological phenomenon. The posterior wall plays an important role in the prevention of hernia formation, not only because of its anatomical strength, but also because of its physiologically dynamic nature. Such a physiologically dynamic and strong posterior wall is needed to be constructed to give 100% cure from the inguinal hernias. My operation technique gives such a dynamic and physiological and strong posterior wall. Steps of the operation. External oblique aponeurosis is exposed as usual. Then external oblique aponeurosis is cut to expose the to explore the inguinal canal. External oblique aponeurosis upper border is sutured to the inguinal ligament, and then incision is being taken in the in this sutured upper leaf. This incision separates the strip of external oblique aponeurosis of which lower border is sutured the inguinal ligament and now upper border held in the forceps will be sutured to the muscle arch. See this strip is sutured in between the muscle arch and the inguinal ligament to form the new posterior wall which is strong and physiologically dynamic. The cord is put in its own place and external oblique aponeurosis, newly formed upper lip and lower lip are sutured in front of the spinal cord as usual. External oblique aponeurosis is sutured as usual in front of the spinal cord. Now we need to change today's trends in groin hernia surgery because mesh repair is based on anatomical principles. Mesh is stitched to create a curtain. This curtain becomes the posterior wall. Such posterior wall is not physiologically dynamic. It is a simple rigid anatomical wall. And our principle is physiologically dynamic and elastic posterior wall gives better protection than a simple rigid anatomical wall. Anatomical versus physiological wall. 
Mesh repair gives anatomical wall which is relaxed at rest and remains relaxed in action also. Whereas in my repair, it gives physiological wall which is relaxed at rest but springs into action or to become a shield whenever there is blow. Rigid wall versus elastic wall. Mesh gives rigid wall. Therefore, it moves in mass up and down, so there are more recurrences on the suture line. Whereas in my repair, the entire wall is in elastic wall, so the, the blow is distributed on all over the surface. Rigid versus elastic wall. See, this is a rigid wall and this is elastic wall. That is strip in situ. That is internal oblique muscle again. That shows contraction. And this strip goes into tension because of contraction of the internal oblique muscle and the external oblique muscle. Internal oblique muscle, which was not active before, now has become fairly active. It is pulling the strip upwards and laterally along with the external oblique muscle. Protection. Mesh repair gives protection over a period of years. It doesn't give any protection on day one. Whereas in my repair, protection is 100% from day one itself. Status today. Today this operation is being followed in many countries all over the world. More than 300 presentations or publications and a dozen RCTs and many RCTs are conducted on this repair. Results are similar to our superior or superior to mesh repairs. Global data of 11,170 patients operated by different surgeons was presented in World Hernia Conference in 2015. It showed that 0.2% recurrence and complication of 1.8% only. Our data of 2,500 patients showed fast recovery and early emulation and less than 0.1% complications and only one recurrence. Many textbooks like Love and Belly, Schwartz, etc. have included this operation technique. We are the first in the world. We are the first to put before the world that inguinal hernia must be repaired on physiological principle. We are the first to scrap century old theories that prevent hernia formation and publish new theory. We are the first to give you a very simple hernia repair that does not use mesh or foreign body. We are the first to use all absorbable sutures inside, leaving no trace of foreign body after surgery. We are the first to give you almost complete cure after surgery without any fear of recurrence. Wikipedia was the first to describe it in a separate section as tension-free pure tissue repair. Now you decide whether to continue with open or laparoscopic mesh repair or to shift to this mesh-free desada repair. My answer is there is no place for mesh processes now in hernia repairs because no mesh techniques of desada repair is available with superior results. Thank you very much. These are some of the photographs of my lecture in World Hernia Conference and in other countries. Warning, Ethicon, Boston, Scientific Corp and CR Bard are among seven companies facing more than 70,000 mesh injury lawsuits in federal court and thousands of additional cases in state courts of USA. 
here companies are playing safe by using doctor's card in the court litigations ethicon's lawyer said the product was thoroughly certified by the doctors and the doctors considered the mesh used to be the gold standard for treatment therefore every surgeon should take an informed consent in writing from the patient to avoid the court litigation following mesh complications after mesh repair in future mesh is a foreign body it is a piece of synthetic cloth prepared from polypropylene polyester it is associated with possible complications of recurrence pain infection vestibular damage hematoma seroma migration rejection perforation sinus formation intestinal adhesion sterility etc etc patient may file a suit against the doctor and the hospital if such informed consent in writing is not taken from the patient before hernia surgery with mesh thank you now